So think of the movie The Godfather, right? It's it's a movie that is just legendary. And it, it goes through all these kinds of different emotions with anticipation and fear and excitement. And just, you know, there's humor in it. There's all kinds of different things in it. And it just, it triggers all these different emotions in you. And that's, think of yourself as that, right? Think of helping a guy connect to you through different types of emotions. And that is what makes you stand out. Because for the most part, most guys, they go on dates with most women and it's really, really boring for a number of different reasons. And so what you want to do is you want to stand out by connecting with him. And, and when you're in the first kind of initial dating phases, you don't need to make them feel a ton of different emotions or really deep emotions or make it really serious or any of that kind of stuff. What you want to do, especially with the first date, if you go on the first date or the first few dates, Dates, what you want is playfulness, right? Love is not serious. Love is playful and fun. And so you want to start off with playfulness and fun and then eventually go into some deeper types of emotions as you spend more and more time together. So be the godfather to him. Obviously not literally, of course, but be a bunch of different emotions. So how do you kind of trigger different emotions? There's a few different ways to do it. The fastest and easiest way is to ask him different questions that spark emotion, right? Have him remember a time when he did something by just asking him like, hey, is there anything that you're really scared of? Is there anything that you're really, that really makes you laugh? That really is a lot of fun to you? And, and if you ask him about those things and then get curious about it and have him talk about it, he'll relive those moments in his mind and he'll start to experience those emotions right there while he's sitting with you. And that's one of the easiest ways to do it. Another easy way to do it is to have experiences that you guys go through where you experience different types of emotions. And it could be as easy as watching movies together, although that's super, super passive, but also potentially going to kinds of different kinds of events together or just different things together and experiencing emotions through that. Another one is learning something together. You can learn a lot about somebody when you learn something together and they have to overcome the difficulty of not knowing how to do something. What happens when you eat your favorite food every single day? It stops being special. That's what the answer is. It stops being special. There's a phrase out there that goes, familiarity breeds contempt. And all this really means is that the more that you are around something, the more that it's in front of you, the more you experience it, the less you appreciate it. So let's take chocolate, for instance. If you love chocolate, but you eat it every single day, it'll eventually get boring and it won't be special anymore, and you will stop appreciating chocolate. And so what do you want to do? You want to eat chocolate less. So maybe eat it once a week, or maybe eat it once every two weeks. And then when you experience chocolate, it'll be this thing that you're looking forward to. It'll be this thing that you, you think about all week. You're like, oh my God, I can't wait until I eat this chocolate right? And then you go and you eat it and it's a savory experience and you're like, mm, oh, all week I've thought about eating this chocolate and it's just so wonderful that I finally have it right in front of me. And so let's stop talking about chocolate. It's making me hungry. Let's talk about how to use this in the real world because this is normal behavior. This is normal. We all do this. And so the scarcity principle, basically what you want to do is create space. And so you don't want to be in front of him all the time. You want to create some distance because that's when he starts missing you. That's when he has a chance to be thinking about you and his desire and his love will grow for you when you're not there. You'll be thinking about what's she doing, right? Like you'll have all these emotions that are going on that he experienced when he's with you going through him later and he'll be like, oh my God, I can't just like the chocolate. I can't wait to see her again. And so you don't want to be texting him all the time. You don't want to be in front of him all the time. You want to give him some space. You want to have an air of mystery about you and what you're doing. And the best way to do that is to create scarcity. Why do people become addicted 
and obsessed with gambling. It's because of unpredictability. So sometimes they win, right? So when you go and you do gambling, you gamble. I'm not a gambler, but if you go and gamble, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you don't really know whether you're going to win or you're going to lose or when you're going to win or when you're going to lose and you're making money and it's awesome and then you lose and it's ah, and you go through this kind of roller coaster of emotions because it's unpredictable and you don't know what you're going to get. And now... I just want to kind of throw this out there, right? Because this, this creates addiction, right? Unpredictability creates addiction. You don't want to be too unpredictable because if you're too unpredictable, he's going to think you're completely insane. He's going to think you're crazy and he's not going to want to deal with you because he's going to be like, this is way too much, way too much for me. So there's, there's different kind of levels that you can do this with and my suggestion is that you start small with all of these things and build your way up as you figure out how to use them and what makes sense so that you're not jumping off a cliff with unpredictability and driving guys out of your life because they think you're completely insane and so how do you use unpredictability when you're texting and we just talked about scarcity and texting so you don't want to be texting him every single day, right? You don't want to text him good morning and good night every single day. If you do text him good morning and good night, you should do it randomly. Randomly throughout the week. If if this is something that you do actually do, which is text him good morning and good night, what you should do is just different times, different days, right? Different days not don't have a pattern to it and just do it in an unpredictable way. And if you're texting, when you are texting, you can text back immediately sometimes. Maybe sometimes you, you wait a little bit to text back. Maybe you, if it's later at night, you wait until the next day to text back. And so just have fun with it. Just play with it. You know, don't make it serious. Don't try to turn this into a game when you're trying to like, you know, get something from him or try to make him do something through it. Just have fun with it. Just make it a part of, of who you are and what you're doing and just, just, just have fun and, and, and don't take it too seriously. Cause like I said, love is playful and fun. It's not serious. And so that's it. The three are emotional range principle, the scarcity principle and unpredictability. And if you combine these three together, you will become somebody that he obsessively thinks about and he will eventually think about you all the time and it will be really exciting for him to think about you and he'll want to be around you, he'll want to be with you and it's a really great way to do things. This is human behavior, this is human psychology right here, this is human biology, we all do this, right? If a guy does this with you, you will feel the exact same way with him.